Hi and welcome back to Colthy RC. So today we're going to go through the flight test with the Eosheen EX3 and talk about some things I like and some things I don't like and generally discuss that. So let's talk about the the drone itself. So I said to you before the build quality was very good. I still do believe that's true. The calibration on this thing was ridiculously easy as it is with other drones particularly bugs because it obviously is a bugs for and it calibrates so simply it's very very nice to calibrate no messing around you do it once and it works and it holds its position in the air so let's talk about the characteristics of the drone you're going to see from the video how stable it hovered in the air it didn't lose altitude as soon as it took off like a xeno it just held its position and obviously that's because it's got so nice at the bottom and that optical flow this is definitely, without any shadow of a doubt, the best toy grade, intermediate, whatever you want to call it, drone I've ever flown. It's so precise in the air, it's untrue. I was stunned how nicely this thing flew. It, it's so smooth in the air as well, it's silky smooth the way it flies. You're going to see me flying it around at about 6 foot, it does not drop altitude like the Xeno did and like a, a lot of other toy grade drones do. It really did fly superbly well. The flight time I got was just worked out just over 22 minutes. So you can't fault that in any way, shape or form. The lights underneath are absolutely amazing. I filmed on quite a greyish day and you're going to see from the video footage you can pick them up really nicely in the air, even at the height I was. It got to about 200 metres before I started having any issues with FPV and you keep flying it will come back but I'd say probably at 200, 210 metres I was starting to lose it and it was dropping out. The other thing this will do is drop out if you're too close to it because I think I'm going to drop out now. I have. I've dropped out because I'm on the table now. So if you look, because I'm close to it, it's dropped out and now it's come back. So it's another thing, but that's not going to cause you an issue when it's in the air. The other thing I love about this is how quiet it is. So yeah, it's very quiet in the air. I love the sound of this. The fact that the cal compass needs calibrating every time isn't necessarily a bad thing because of the fact that it's just that quick to do. And it does seem to, when I landed it, it seemed to need to calibrate the compass as well. The couple of things I didn't talk about or on the last video the controller you need to put these down because if you don't when you hold this this is very back heavy these have been designed to hold like this and fly and the other thing i didn't discuss with you is the phone holder so as you can see the phone holder pops out of the inside of here it's not a bad design it's certainly better than the ones that go on the bottom and then you click it up you pull that forward and to lock it into place you just simply push it forward and it can't go back down again and it does hold the phone really nicely and then just put weight back on it to push it back so the phone holder yeah fake antennas obviously we discussed awful camera gimbal very smooth when you're flying it you have no issue with that stick resolution feels really really nice I had no issue with stick resolution. Return to home, you're going to see from the video how accurate it was. It was probably about, I don't know, a couple of foot when I stopped it. It wasn't going to hit the map, but it wasn't a million miles off it. The one big thing, the key thing to this is how stable it is in the air. It's super smooth. When you Even at 50, 60 metres high, when you hover in, it hovers. It doesn't move about, which is going to bring me onto the camera. So in here it has a 2K camera that is got a, well it's not a one axis gimbal, it's an actual gimbal that's, that's rotatable from the controller. So what they've done is they've made this soft mounted. As you can see, it's soft mounted. So the problem you get with these type of any type of camera is getting that right, is getting the stability of that camera. So you can hard mount it, and if you hard mount it, you can have an issue with being too hard mounted, you pull the vibration from all the motors and everything else through the drone into the camera. If you soft mount it, you eliminate most of this, but you then get the movement of air hitting the lens, which can be even worse. On this one, they've got it wrong, because the jello is apparent when it's standing still more than when it's moving. So when this thing stands still in the air, you're getting some jello and that's because it's probably getting buffeted by the wind more. That's my opinion of it. And when it's moving forward, it's not too bad. 
It's got 20 frames per second camera rate. Again, that is not helping. You're never gonna get smooth, stable footage at 20 frames per second with an unstabilized gimbal. Like I say all the time on my channel, if you're buying this type of drone and you're paying this kind of money, you're not gonna get a true camera drone. What you should be looking for is how well this thing flies. I'm gonna do another video with this and strap a GoPro on the front of it and let's see what it's, what it's like with a GoPro when it's got a stabilized camera on the front because I'd imagine it's gonna look absolutely superb because the camera footage that you're gonna see does not look the best. Why some manufacturers don't take the plunge and remove this bit? So if you cut this bit out and it was manufactured without this bit on and you put a GoPro sessions holder in there or a run cam, uh, the new Runcam 5 holder, something like that in the front, you'd have a stabilized image. You could even have it controlled that you control and tilt from the controller at the camera angle. These things have stabilized, stabilized image on these cameras. You could have a really nice image. They could even go into production with one cam. What would you add on? You'd take 30 quid off the prices by taking the camera out and probably add 80 on by putting it thing. You could probably have this still at under 200 pounds with a run cam 5 stuck in the front of it, recording stabilized footage. And it'd be so much better. So if there were any manufacturers I were watching out there, why can't you do that? Why can you not? take that to the next step because that to me would be the next step in these type of drones or simply put a gimbal on it like the hub like hubson have done and femi have done what i would say is from the flying characteristics of this thing which is its which is its massive win point this to me flies better than my femi a3 the camera looks nowhere near the quality of the femi a3 but this is smoother in the air and it's a better more precise craft and that's simply because of sensors on the bottom nothing else is causing that apart from the sensors on the bottom which the femi dump so would i recommend it it's difficult because the drone flies so well but i wish it was i wish i'd just make one without a camera on i wish i'd let you have a modular system that you can just put your own camera into it makes so much more sense and i know a lot of people are thinking well i don't own a gopro i don't own a, a run cam 5 but if they went into production with Runcam, and I'm sure Runcam would do a deal with these people and say, yeah, of course you can have them, we'll fit, you'll let them fit them in your drones and we'll sell them your X amount of money. What about a Bugs 4W and Eashin EX3 with a Runcam camera? How good would that be? But I'm not a designer. I'm going to leave you with the video footage that's coming up. The footage you're going to see is it, how well it hovers, how well it flies, recorded um, from the GoPro. And then you're going to see footage of it through the screen recorder. I only did a short bit through the screen recorder. I'm not going to pad my video out with screen recordings. And to be fair, they only look average at best because you're never going to get the best evolution back. But then you can see what the app looks like and then obviously I'll leave you with four or five minutes of footage of it flying through the camera so you can see what you do get for your money. The image didn't look horrendous at all. It's quite sharp. It's just got jello and it's not got a high enough frame rate. But it doesn't really stutter, which is what I expected it to do. But I think the jello is being caused by the the combination this being too soft and the uh, megabits per second so i'll leave you with that you make your own mind up please let me know in the comments what you think and do you think it's a good idea that i stick a run cam or a gopro on here or do you want me to put both both on let's see what kind of image you would get with it mounted on the top and how good a drone would look if you did that to it thanks ever so much for watching have a fantastic day so this is the flight test so as you can see, we've used auto takeoff here, and as you can see how smoothly it hovers. You can see it's not, there's hardly any movement in there. There's a four, four to five mile an hour wind gusting to about seven, so it wasn't very windy at all, but as you can see, it's extremely smooth in the way it hovers. And quiet, so quiet is this drone, compared to a lot of the other toy grade ones on the market. So there's the lights, as you can see, we just turn the lights on underneath and they are bright. They do a good, really good job, those lights. I like the fact, you can see it's a dull day, so they do show up really nicely on a dull day. So let's just fly it about and let's see if it drops altitude. And as you can see, it doesn't, it probably drops about maybe 6, 12 inches max and then recovers as soon as you put the throttle back on. And give it some forward motion so yeah really nice really really nice the way it hovers so i'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of the video you're gonna see me do this a few times and i'm gonna do initiate the return to home to see how close it lands 
and then after that I'm going to show you some pictures that are taken from the camera tell me what you think about them and then I will go straight into the footage recorded to the screen recorder and then obviously the footage recorded from the SD card have a fantastic day thanks for watching
thanks for watching my channel if you like the video please subscribe and hit the like button and also hit that notification bell there's plenty more good stuff coming up